Yes, I am Stephen Solomon. I'm the principal legal officer for international constitutional and global health law in the legal counsel's office. Stephen okay. Solomon. Thank uh, you for naming the summary with your title. Thank Go you, ahead. thank you, thank you very much. So, um, let me say what what the situation is now. That there is uh, there are six member states that have proposed a supplementary. Uh, item for the uh, WHA 73 agenda. Uh, the supplementary item that they have proposed is entitled uh, Inviting Taiwan as an Observer to the World Health Assembly. Um, so there have been many questions about how this would work and about whether the DG has authority to invite Taiwan on his own. Let me say at this point, as this issue is before member states at the Assembly, which is where it properly should be, it is an issue of policy and, in fact, of, sensitive, of a sensitive geopolitical nature, it is properly before the Health Assembly. The Health Assembly, the member states are responsible, and their mandate is to take care of the policies of the organization. The uh, Secretariat, the Director General and staff works on the advancing the public health mandate of the organization within the rules and policies established by the member states. So um, if, if I uh, may, if to, to understand this, and I, we appreciate the opportunity uh, to speak about this, you, um, the, uh, it's important to go back to the founding document of the organization itself, which is the WHO Constitution. So, uh, and I thought we'd take just a moment to walk through it because I think if you walk through the language of the Constitution, which is very straightforward, uh, it makes it clear why this is the case, why uh, member states take care of the policy issues, including in particular who attends their highest level meeting, the World Health Assembly, and the mandate of the Secretariat, the Director General, for technical, scientific, public health issues and the administration of them. So this derives directly from the Constitution. You can see it in Article 31 of the Constitution. For those who want to call it up on your Google screens, just do Google WHO Constitution, and you can find it, of course, in all of the six languages. I'll read it out for those who might ha not have a screen handy for them. Article 31 of the Constitution, second sentence, the important one provides, the Director General, subject to the authority of the board shall be the chief technical and administrative officer of the organization. So that's the overall responsibility for the DG dealing with technical and administrative matters for the organization. You'll then see in Article 32, just one just below, that the Director General shall be ex officio the secretary of the Health Assembly. So this means, being the Secretary of the Health Assembly, that he is responsible in two important areas. He's responsible for following the rules and policies of the organization, rules and policies as set by member states, and he's also responsible for the good order of the Health Assembly. Now, let's first talk about what those rules and policies are that he is responsible for following as the Secretary of the Health Assembly. And here we just go to another part of the Constitution, and thank, I, I, forgive me for take, walking you through the Constitution, but this is where it all begins. It is the foundational document. So the rules of the Health Assembly on invi invitations to observers are found in Article 18H. And Article 18H sets out what the functions of the Health Assembly shall be, the functions of the Health Assembly. So these are not the functions of the Director General, the functions of the Health Assembly. And Article 18H reads as follows. The functions of the Health Assembly shall be to invite any organization, international or national, governmental or non-governmental, which has responsibilities related to those of the organization to appoint representatives to participate without right to vote. That's a description of the observer status, but it goes on to say, on conditions prescribed by the Health Assembly, on conditions prescribed by the Health Assembly, uh, and in the case, it makes it even more specific, here indicating 
the, uh, the interests of the drafters of the Constitution and countries in exercising the authority with respect to who participates in their meeting. It goes on to say, as on conditions prescribed by the Health Assembly, but in the case of national organizations, invitations shall be issued only with the consent of the government concerned. So when it comes to the DG's discretion to invite, that discretion is based on the uh, application of Article 18H. And in the past, the DG has invited entities. He has done so on the understanding that it is consistent, that those invitations are consistent with Article 18H. And he does so because his function is Chief Technical and Administrative Officer and Secretary of the Health Assembly with responsibilities. So who is the DG invited under the authority when he has found, when DGs in the past have found that it is consistent with Article 18H? Well, entities where there have been no questions of controversy, for example, like Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, the International Committee of the Red Cross, the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria. These are examples of the invitations he's extended. Now, on uh, eight occasions, the uh, uh, previous the Office of the Director General has also invited Taiwan to participate as an observer. That invitation was issued on the basis of a cross-strait understanding and on, uh, because the other policy, and I should have mentioned this earlier, the policy that is important, I said that the DG has to follow the rules and policies. That's the constitutional rule. The policy set on this issue with respect to Taiwan is set out in a resolution of the Health Assembly, Resolution 25.1. And that resolution, which the DG is also responsible for carrying forward in good faith, provides that uh, the, uh, the World Health Assembly uh, recognized the, representat the representatives of the People's Republic of China as the only legitimate representative of China to the World Health Assembly, and I'll re continue reading, and expelled, expelled the representatives of Chiang Kai-shek uh, from uh, the World Health Assembly. Uh, the uh, for which, uh, I'll read it for exactly from quote. Um, re the resolution 25.1 recognized the representatives of the People's Republic of China as the only legitimate representatives of China to the World Health Organization. And this was again the decision of the Health Assembly in 1972, and to exp and expelled. This is the quote. Forthwith, the representatives of Chiang Kai-shek from the place which they unlawfully occupy at the World Health Organization. That was the agreed language in the decision in 1972. That decision still stands. The reference to the representatives of Chiang Kai-shek is a reference to what was uh, then and is still the official name of Taiwan, the Republic of China. So the DG must, yeah. must act consistently with that. So uh, the, uh, when the invitation to Taiwan was extended, it was extended those times that it was uh, on the basis of an understanding reached across the straits and on an assessment by the DG that the invitation would also be consistent with Article 18H. So with respect to the question that was asked, does the DG have discretion to invite observers, the answer is, Yes, and it is a conditional discretion. It is conditional on his responsibilities as secretary of the assembly and as chief technical administrative officer, conditioned that his invitations are consistent with the rules of the set out in the Constitution and the policies decided by the World Health Assembly. So I hope that was a long answer. I wanted to take you all through it because to see how it fits together, to see how it is uh, uh, grounded in the Constitution, I think it's very important to help the understanding on this very important, very sensitive issue. And only the assembly can change Thank you. It. Yeah, and I well, to add, well. Yeah, to add that any change, that's why this has to, that's why the assembly is the only body competent to make changes in this area. It's the assembly's Constitution, 
It's the Assembly's decision, the only competent body to make changes, the only body with control and authority and power is the Assembly itself. It's not the Director General. It's not the Secretariat of WHO. Thank you very much, sir. I hope this has been quite clear, but I still see there are a lot of questions. So please, if you can give short answers, I will start with John Delacoste from the left. John, yes. <coughs> question, Hello, can you hear please, me, and question, and answer, please. Thank yes. you. Yes. Good, uh, good morning, uh, Stephen. Uh, firstly, I, I'd like to uh, get you to clarify the other day when you were doing the uh, actions in the briefing that the Taiwan participates. Um, I understand they don't participate in Goan. Global Alert and Response Network. What's the legal reasons for that, why they can't participate? And secondly, how does the Taiwan situation uh, differ from the question of Palestine? Okay, thanks. Uh, I can see we may have more than 20 questions here. We're getting into, you know, very, very important areas, very interesting areas. But let, let, me, let me tell you what, about the participation of Taiwan in the technical work the technical and scientific work of the organization, uh, because it is quite broad. It occurs both in the, uh, uh, in the context of the response uh, to COVID-19, and it occurs generally. Five important areas in each with respect to the international health regulations. The Taiwanese CDC has a point of contact that uh, works with the, that has direct contact with WHO headquarters. Uh, it is uh, one of the points of contacts with the same rights of access and back and forth co connectivity uh, as uh, every state party to the international health regulations. Uh, the Taiwanese are, uh, Taiwanese experts are also participating in three of the networks that have been stood up for the response. They participate in the clinical management network they participate in the Infection Prevention and Control Network, and they are now participating in the Vaccine Network. These are among the most important networks dealing with the response for obvious reasons. Uh, we have direct briefings with Taiwan, the Taiwanese CDC experts. They have been uh, done by our technical lead, uh, Dr. Maria Van Kerkhoff. The Taiwanese experts also participated in the Research and uh, Innovation Forum, Taiwanese experts work with WHO directly also through the European Centers for Disease Control. The question was about GOARN, so that deals with something that is not specific. It's involved in the COVID response, but it's not specific to it. So for those other areas, Taiwan, we just to say Taiwanese experts participate in last year eight technical meetings. They participate in the pandemic influenza preparedness framework through their, the Adimmune Corporation, a vaccine manufacturer in Taiwan. Uh, Taiwanese experts participate in the International Agency for Research in Cancer's publication called the IARC Blue Book. They have a technical expert on the IHR uh, roster of experts uh, that uh, is the source for experts on the Emergency Committee. And there are, throughout the year, numerous face-to-face -face meetings between WHO technical experts and Taiwanese technical experts. These are all based on uh, issues of, uh, technical, uh, of technical experts with the right technical aspects. Go on is an area where we know there has been interest in their participation. That hasn't been set up uh, at this point. We are looking always for areas where technical work with the organization can continue, and that's an area that we will be looking at as well. So uh, I hope that answers, that answers the question. The issue of Thank Palestine, I can, I can say very quickly, Palestine is, in, is uh, invited as an observer by the World Health Assembly. That was resolution WHA 27.37, and uh, it is where the Health Assembly decided, again, policies of the Health Assembly, and underscoring the point, it's, these, these are Health Assembly decisions, the Health Assembly decided to invite Palestine as an observer. Thanks. Ian. Yeah, uh, yes, good morning. Uh, Jan Habermann, my name. I, I write for several German language media. Um, it's also on the WHA. Um, there has been uh, loads of criticism uh, towards the, uh, the uh, DG, Dr. Tedros, and my uh, over the handling uh, of the corona pandemic. 
my question is, is there any provision in the WHO rules or constitution that allows member states to hold a vote of no confidence in the DG or call for a sort of impeachment uh, trial uh, in the DG? Thank you. Yeah, well, if you go back to the rule, uh, Article 32, which I mentioned, you'll see right up front there that the DG is an elected official. His accountability is to all 194 member states as an elected official. I surprised you with a short answer. I guess. Yes, <laughs> I was waiting for this. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. I realized. So I was. I was good. trying. No, no, it's very well. Okay. It's very well like that. No. Yeah. No you, problem. you know, you're asking a lawyer to give short answers. That is, you know, yeah. that's putting but, me on a, the, on the spot. Yeah, that is why we, we should have organized a separate briefing. It would be a no. So, <laughs> Catherine, Catherine Fianco. Yes. Uh, good morning, Stephen. Thank you for being with us sure, this morning. Sure. It's a pleasure. Yes, and Alessandra, you're right. I mean, this deserved uh, an exclusive briefing because uh, we really have a lot of questions uh, for Stephen. Uh, Stephen, could you please be more precise about the six member states that have proposed uh, that supplementary item? You did not mention the countries. Thank you. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll give you them as we know them so far. There, there may be more because it's, uh, there's still time uh, but uh, hang on just a moment. While Stephen is looking, can you hear me? Yes. Um, just to mention, we will do, we're planning on a separate assembly specific briefing on the procedures and run out for the assembly for next week. Um, so that's in plan. So um, you, you don't need to ask all the procedural questions now for, for Steve. Let's focus on the issues of hand as possible because exactly what you're asking, Catherine, we actually are planning one for next week um, as things are still developing. Cheers. Okay, and I can make this a quick answer. Here's the six. Eswatini, Marshall Islands, Nicaragua, Palau, St. Lucia, and Paraguay. And I believe many, if not all, of their submittals are already on the website. Okay. So you can go and look at what they've said, and in fact you can even go look at what they propose in their draft resolution. Which by the Thank way, which, by the way, their draft resolution says that the WHA sh shall invite. Christian, Christian, sorry, Christian Erwin. It's also a procedural one. Uh, is there going to be a vote on those propositions or is this going to be dissolved, uh, uh, resolved before the WHA starts? What exactly is the procedure to um, to decide on whether Taiwan can join or not? I can give you another short answer to that question. That's up to member states. Yeah, but what do they do? Do they <laughs> decide when, when the health assembly starts, we are not going to take a vote? Is that a vote to not take a vote on the issue? Or how does that actually happen? Okay, I can give you a longer answer by telling you about the history on this issue. <laughs> but very, but I, can, I can make that because uh, Christian is saying, no, make it short. So, uh, but I can tell you, uh, I can tell you very briefly that the uh, proposal for a similar uh, supplementary item has been made uh, many times in the past, uh, 14 times in the past. And on uh, two of those occasions, it was voted. On the rest of the occasions, it was addressed through a uh, agreed process and it was decided by consensus not to accept the proposal. And on the two occasions it was voted, their vote was against accepting the proposal. Thank you, sir. Gabriela, Supermayor. Thank you so much for taking my question. Um, so, the DG has had the right to invite someone like Gabi or these alliances that you mentioned. But they can, but he can invite Taiwan as well. Okay. The good. problem is that, yeah. just, just, just to let me say, so we are assuming that China will say no. But in the light of transparency, maybe China say yes and, and say yes, let's bring Taiwan because we want everybody to be in the same page or something like that. I mean, we are assuming that China is going to say no. Okay, so no, the, I thank you. Thank you for the question. I was just going to say that 
um, it's not a it's not a right. It's it's a uh, it's a uh, matter that is related to his responsibilities as secretary of the assembly as set out in the Constitution. So the Constitution doesn't say the DG has a right. The Constitution says the DG shall be the secretary of the World Health Assembly. And that means he has responsibilities as a secretary, which I, I've laid out before. And I think the question is, is it possible that China might say under the circumstances that they would attend? That's a question for China. That is a question for uh, uh, because they are the ones I think you're addressing that to. Uh, the, secretariat, the secretariat doesn't have any mandate to involve itself in, in issues, political issues, particularly where there are uh, sensitivities and aspects that have already been addressed by the Health Assembly. And I think I've referred you to WHA 25.1, which is the resolution of the Health Assembly, which addressed itself to this matter and still stands today. Thank you, sir. I will take the last two questions and then we will go to WMO. Paula. Yes, yeah. hi. Uh, this is probably more a question for Christian um, regarding uh, an appeal that was made uh, earlier this week to WHO. Should I ask it let, now? or uh, it. Let me see yeah. if, uh, just one second, let me see because today we have to switch chairs. If you uh, Yoshitake has a question for Dr. Solomon, and then uh, uh, eventually we'll uh, ask Christian to answer. Uh, you? Uh, can you be unmuted, please? Oh, sorry. Yoshitake. Yeah, now you are. Uh, Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so the uh, question to Mr. Solomon. Um, uh, technically, who's who's giving the invitation? Is it president of the WHA or, or uh, uh, DG on behalf of WHA? Even, the, uh, mm -hmm. yes. even oh, that, ahead, even that, uh, thank you. you, even that is decided by the World Health Assembly. So, for example, in the decision regarding Palestine, the decision was specifically said to request the DG to issue the invitation. This underscores his role as secretary of the assembly. So that decision said, that decision said, request the DG to issue the invitation. Um, and I think that underscores how these matters are really held, held at the policy level, held at the level of sovereign states. Um, the assembly, though, can do it directly. And in fact, the six countries I mentioned in their draft resolution proposed different language. Their language says that the World Health Assembly invites. Now, again, that's not agreed language. That's their proposal on this issue. Thank you very much.